Joe Murray, off topic, but high catching seems to be gone completely out of the game at Intercounty as defenders are allowed to pull and drag and not even attempt to go for the ball. Needs to be refereed properly. Do you agree with that? I'm uh, not sure. Not sure about that. Now, to be honest, with you, I think defenders are punished an awful lot. I don't think he get away with nearly as much. Like I don't know if Tommy Walsh would get away at county level now with what he did back in the day and the classic little, the classic little push to the back of the head. All of a sudden, you're blind. Like um, it's funny. Like I often said it before. Like if you, if, like this is not a foul. Like, but if you have your hand in front of the guy's helmet just as the ball is coming down. He can't see the ball. All you need to do is lose sight of the ball for a second. But it's such an art form to be able to do that and still try and catch the ball with your other hand or whatever it is. Like, so I would say Tommy and JJ definitely had that down to a T. I don't think high catching has gone out of the game, though. I just think um, a lot of the time you're not putting puck outs down just on top of lads for the sake of it. Yeah. You're trying to give it a what be it a one on one inside or be it a one on one on the wing. So it might like you're not just. Laurie and ball down on top of the centre back like we would have before. Yeah, I do think that the 50 50 ball is going out of the game. Like, so obviously there is room for high catches and there are lads who are unreal at it. Like, growing up, would you have been down at the park and there's like, I don't know, eight or nine lads and just the ball is pucked up between everybody and see who can catch it? I mean, yeah. I, I actually wonder is there a better way to learn catching a high ball than that? It's probably not a better way because you just have to get in among, around amongst the lads and it's such a a confident sapping experience to have a lad go oh it's it's absolutely sickening yeah so we would have definitely done that uh, a lot of time growing a lot of the time growing up who did the better finger wag sheedy or dennis taylor look i'm going to give it to, to sheedy aren't i uh jack fagan dermot burns great in the high in on the high ball they certainly are both of those players dermot burns caught some absolute beauties over the course of the season one of them against cork i think over if i have it right robbie o'flynn absolutely exceptional Sean O'Maher says, uh, following on from the last show, best hand passer of a ball. DJ had a bullet, John Troy a wizard, John Flaherty a legend, and big Tony uh, Doran lethal. A hand puck he had instead of hand pass. He was, uh, he was fantastic. Great show. Who do you think is the best hand passer? Do you know what stands out to me before you answer? 2006 under 21 All-Ireland Final replay in Thurles. God, it was so annoying. Uh, Kilkenny got a last second goal to send it to a replay. But at one stage, I'm pretty sure Richie Hogan was standing, I don't know, 45, 65, and he did a hand pass over his head into space for someone. It was absolutely glorious. Yeah, Noel McGrath's hand pass for Lar for that last goal was brilliant as well. It was that brilliant reverse hand pass where you know there's somebody gone into space. Um, I, DJ was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Oh, Jesus, that rots me. <laughs> but, um, what was I going to say to you? DJ's hand pass was so aesthetically good on the eye, like, and mm. it was just the old, the old handball one. The hand really goes. Richie Hogan was very good at it, even though he stopped doing it at county level. I think a lot of people are cutting on to it. I wouldn't be surprised if Brian Cody had a had a word with him as well, because it could be a bit too flashy and show and showy, maybe. Uh, it probably would be DJ though, because it was just twenty or thirty yards, and it was just it was always on the money as well. It was never to the ground. It was always exactly where it should go. And yeah, as no. regards as regards best hands, Tony Dorn just is in a different is in a different planet to me as regards best hands and the abuse he took. If you look back at any of the videos, like he's literally being killed, and he's still come out with the ball. He's just <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> Ronan Maher, Aaron Galan couldn't couldn't say it's gone. To be fair, they're both really good in the air. Aaron Galan is class in the air. It must be said. Nisha Waldron poking off the wall between yourself and your brother and competing in the air. Great days. Uh, Hurls, uh, hurls down need to be hurls down needs to be the rule for that big group in the field. No one able to hurl Sunday with broken fingers. Otherwise, yeah. Did you have that where you can't go up? And, well, I would say just no one pulling in the air. Obviously, you can use your hurley to sort of manipulate people or whatever and, and protect yourself. But obviously, yeah, yeah. if you're down in the park, a load of like ten or twelve year olds, and everyone's pulling in the air, I mean, ridiculous. No, it's madness. No, no, you're allowed to use your heart to protect yourself and to kind of jockey into position, but not to pull. Funnily enough, I remember uh, Lester Ryan was in UL with me, and uh, anyone that knows UL, Capa Villa is one of the student accommodation places. Him and it was Michael Rafter from Dixborough and somebody else, Pat O'Neill from the Bennett's Bridge, they just put balls up between, it was one lad was pucking in between the other two, and there was pulling as hard as you like. How there was some broken collarbones, broken hands, I never know. It was it was some breeding ground for hardship, but they were all fairly good in the air as a result of it. If you enjoyed this piece of content, please follow us on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of the page, which helps the channel grow. 
And if you want audio podcasts, go to patreon.com forward slash our game.